page in which I want to uh, make you know about the logo of Vishuddha. It is designed by us and it includes all the key aspects in which we are uh, working on. So likewise, you can see here the green background, which represents the evergreen nature of the uh, enterprise. And also it showcases the uh, farming sector as a whole. So moving on to the next slide. And also I am uh, working here as the R&D head. So all the research works which are there, um, it includes both the technical and as well as the management sector as well. How the structure of the company should be, how the organizational behavior might have to work on. So all the things are being researched by me and things are being implemented there. So moving on to the next page, this is our mission statement in which we want to focus on uh, providing uh, people chemical free nutritious food. Now we all know that chemicals such as pesticides, fertilizers and preservatives are often used in modern agriculture and food processing. And however, these chemicals can have harmful effects on human health and environment. So we move on to chemical free nutritious food, which is a healthier and much more sustainable option. And for the benefits of chemical free nutritious food, we can easily uh, speak of that it contains more nutrients as chemical free food is often grown in nutrient rich soil without the use of artificial fertilizers. And as a whole, we all can say that it reduces exposure to harmful chemicals. Uh, chemicals used in agriculture may be harmful to human health, especially in the long-term exposure. Uh, apart from this, it is uh, from the point of view of the Indic culture as well, where we uh, think of the environmental sustainability as well. So there we uh, practice chemical free farming uh, as well which reduces the impact on the environment by avoiding the use of chemical uh, fertilizers, which can pollute both the soil and the water. So as a whole, we can um, prove and make sure that the environmental uh, sustainability is being there with the mission of the company. So why am I with the uh, Now it's, uh, we all can see here the image is being uh, projected. And this image, you all can see that uh, I am presenting the format of Vishuddha and that point of time it was not well developed so the PPT was not there with me. I was uh, there at uh, ICR PUSA, Indian Council of Agricultural Research um, of uh, New Delhi. Uh, the main headquarters of ICR is there only and being an ICR scholar as well as I am with uh, Acrivision which is a uh, wing of ABVP, Akhil Bharati with the Parishad. So I am the state co-convener of ABVP, uh, Acrivision. So there on I was uh, being able to uh, showcase some of the uh, presentations and the web pages which we are working on as a part of Vishuddha. And also I want to uh, speak that my expertise and experience in organic farming is being used in the uh, company. Also my knowledge of post-harvest technology and management in which I mainly focus on how to remove the obstacles of um, chemicals and pesticides and also the preservatives which are being added to the chemicals uh, or chemical included uh, foods in tropical countries like India, Africa, something like this. And apart from this, the higher purpose is that a feeling of sales satisfaction has to be there in every form of job in which we are working on uh, to serve the humanity. Next, we all can see here, India is blessed with a wide variety of indigenous food uh, that we all can see here. Few of them has been uh, mentioned here. Yeah, it includes amla, which is the Indian gooseberry. Uh, next is the mango. We all know mango is the king of fruits. We, uh, we are all very much acquainted this thing, uh, with this thing. And apart from this, guava is there. Uh, I have mentioned all the benefits of eating guavas so that uh, most of this include the vitamin C and guava. Apart from those include vitamin A, dietary fiber and other antioxidants. Apart from that, we, we can see here is the custard apple. In Bengali, uh, we call it Atta and in the normal Hindi thing, we might call it Shita Phal. So apart from this, we can see here the Imli, the Tamarind, which we all know. Now the word Tamarind has been derived from Tamar i Hind. Now it's a Persian etymology, I think so. Uh, so we are work currently we are working on the um, sour segment, that is the Amla and the Imli. Moving on to the next part. I have mentioned here the benefits of amla, which will be included in our products as well. It uh, boosts immunity, enhances digestion. We all know this, all, all the 
points which are included here has been mentioned in our ayurvedic texts uh, it improves skin health because it in have uh, vitamin c and vitamin e in its uh, nutritional well apart from this we can have hair growth lowers cholesterol and it also supports liver function overall amla is a nutrient rich food that offers many health benefits and is valuable addition to any healthy diet now these are all the products this photo set leaked by me only so you can see here the products uh, amla i have mentioned the scientific name as well being a technical person so it's phylanthus emblica it and the products which we have right now with us is the sweet amla it um, resembles a candy um, not a pure form of candy in which we uh, consider chocolate being the main ingredient for the thing now it's a purely organic based candy so it includes amla sweet amla uh, later on we can have the ghee amla and the nice part is that in the ghee amla we don't include the ghee but it have a natural ghee flavor in it now i can't explain all the uh, ingredients and all the recipes with you all but uh, it includes a bit of uh, jaggery or gourd which we say with it now it enhances the amla flavor into the ghee thing and lastly we have with us the gandharaj amla gandharaj is one of the um, known uh, lemon uh, variants of uh, bengal and as well as the whole of the india now so it adds the natural gandharaj flavor to the amla so the next product in which we are uh, focusing on is the imli segment so we all know that imli has many uh, traditional medicinal purposes in which it is a good source of antioxidants it aids digestion it reduces inflammation it might lower cholesterol and also we all know uh, during our covid periods that it boosts the immunity system very well because it includes the vitamin c and all other liver functions as well so apart from this we can see here it helps to control blood sugar and diabetes as a whole moving on to the next slide we have with us the products of imli uh, and also once again it is known as tamarind indica in the technical scientific nomenclature uh, so the first segment which in which we are working on is the tasty tangy uh, it is the sweeter one later on we can have with us the, the tasty tangy uh, ones so which are on the hotter side so two uh, variants are there in which one is the sweet chili one and the other is the extra chili one so it's a more or less a variant of the shezwan kind of thing the point 3 which i am mentioning right now the extra chili one and apart from this we have with us the imli achar uh, which uh, can we mostly speak of as the by product in which of the of the uh, other imli uh, chutney or the other imli products which we are talking about uh, for example the tasty dagni segment apart from this we have the imli achar now we have uh, seen that during our pilot running uh, people used to claim that it is uh, making us feel uh, as a feel that it is uh, bringing moon and pani so that <laughs> that's how we got the name here now it's being told as the mouth watering taste it have with it apart from this uh, the purposes and all the um, higher order thinking which uh, i want to uh, bring on to this company and currently it is working on it on uh, in the including the company as well so the first thing is that we believe that uh, we are here not to do business but to serve the humanity as a whole uh, the second point which i want to think uh, focus is that consuming chemical free food makes us healthy and good we all know this thing but uh, few or in few times we Uh, see us that we are consuming chemical free food so thus to give a chemical free alternative we have started this company and the last thing the final thing which all which we all want to stress upon is that the lesser the preservatives greater the life these are all the key segments and the key beliefs in which we are working upon to uh, make sure the company run and grow its uh, not only its business but also serving the humanity as a whole and lastly this is the final page in which we all can see here the symbol of vishuddha this is our page and right now the work on the website is also being done it's being uh, the name of the website is vishuddha.in uh, being an indian product and actually it's not because we don't get the uh, vishuddha.com version uh, so it has been bought by someone else and right now we are 
with the Vishuddha dot in one. Uh, so this is the our logo. This is our logo, and we all can see it in the Vishuddha dot in page. Uh, work has been done on our web page as well. So it's now not included in the Google uh, business web page. Uh, slowly, uh, a day after tomorrow, it will be added on. So, ma'am, this is the last and the final page of my PPT. And thank you all for bearing with me. Namaskar. Open the floor for um, for feedback, questions, interaction based on what we heard from Aditra. So, I think um, uh, we should try to understand one aspect, Sapanazi, like... Um... Aritra, are you feel like how are you marketing this uh, product? Uh, what kind of challenges you are seeing? How is the response from the market? These are the excellent initiative. I think uh, we just need to reach the market uh, and we need to penetrate the market uh, more deeply. Absolutely, sir. So, firstly, and which we are thinking of is that we want to target the local markets. And apart from the, uh, targeting the local markets, actually we are focusing on the um, shops which are there in the railway stores of eminent uh, railway stations like uh, we have with us the Dom Dom one, the Shialda and Howrah. These are the most eminent um, stations and platforms of uh, West Bengal. So we think by uh, this, uh, by opening franchises or shops there only, we can have a bit of marketing uh, done. And apart from this, we can have with us the online segment in which we would uh, uh, market our products using Amazon and Flipkart. These are the most uh, thing. And we, we have um, thought of few strategies like uh, promoting our products in Facebook and uh, some other social media. So that might uh, get some uh, mouth campaigning from the customers as well. So these are all the things we are, which we have uh, thought of. And for, uh, can I, I even, to much more detailed thing, or should I stop here, sir? No, no just, just uh, answer the questions you're getting. Continue, okay. Ravindraji. Yeah, so basically, Aritra, like, uh, do you want to highlight some of the challenges we are facing? What kind of support, what kind of help you need? Like, uh, what are the next steps? Okay, sir. So the first point I have uh, predicted that uh, if my product goes well, and firstly, I want to not, uh, I in Hindi, we say nazar na lag jai. I have heard most of the uh, segments and the feedbacks is uh, quietly uh, nice and it's up to the mark which we are targeting. So I am thinking that companies like Dabur and Imami who have uh, bigger pocket size, so they can uh, move on to my segment as well. But right now, they are mostly focusing on the uh, tomato ketchups and that segment. And we are focusing on Imli as the base of the uh, sauce or the chutney, which we all say, call it really. Um, so they might shift onto this segment as well, and they can have the loss-making strategies in which uh, they can compete with us and they can make us uh, ruin our business. So this is one of the segment, but uh, right now I have uh, targeted to focus more on the local markets because in the local markets, it's more about the uh, personal relations which we are having with the uh, distributors and the dealers. So if the system goes on, let's see, it might uh, have the connectivity and the base so that we can spread later. Okay. Okay. I think that is the right strategy, like uh, getting a good coverage in the local market. And then definitely when you are going to compete with a, bit, a bigger brand, you will yes, have to change your strategy. So I think, yeah, first make sure how do you retain your customer base and how do you like, uh, as you are working on with the PR and other things. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Keep us updated and uh, definitely these are like a great initiative. Yeah. Absolutely, sir. And I would note uh, how to improve all my products and I would like you people to uh, taste a bit of this, uh, my samples as well. So later on, I will be knowing how to penetrate into the American market as well. So uh, okay. I might be looking on to this for it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, comments for Haritra? Could I go ahead, ma'am? Yes, please do. Yes. So first of all, I really like mangoes. That I saw that in your slide that you know mangoes do have a lot of properties and like and if people need to know about it. If I had the chance, I would eat mangoes all day long, but my mom wouldn't allow me to do so. But yes, the thing is, like most of the younger generation, especially, 
are kind of moving away from sattvic food and more healthier alternatives of food that we have and instead are moving towards more of junk food uh, so to say so like uh, what are you looking at the aspect of having these awareness campaigns to actually show that there is uh, in fact scientific backing of these foods of having all these properties of course i know a little bit from the, the science part there's magnifenin and mangoes which is does have anti cancerous properties even amla and imli as well so what uh, what are you looking at the more of awareness generating aspect of uh, your cause absolutely and uh, this was one of the key things in which we were focusing in the first part because um, the marketing comes second on and in the beginning first we have to make sure that people are aware of the fact that they are eating uh, chemical uh, stuffed uh, food uh, in their plates so the first thing is that creating an awareness about the health hazards which are being uh, caused by the preservatives and the chemicals which we are eating and it uh, goes up to the uh, tamasic to the sattvic food in a much more um, ayurvedic technical term so um, we, and we all know that uh, people are currently moving on to the junk food which is much more rajasic i would say and uh, the tamasic thing is that the thing which when we uh, speak of uh, food elements which are much more uh, eaten after the post harvesting cell so that the uh, harvesting period of the same thing has been uh, long away uh, so there we have the tamasic food as well so in the tamasic segment only how can we reduce the tamas part so that's the key target and when we speak of removing all the chemicals and preservative we are surely moving the chemicals and uh, we are surely moving the tamasic part from it there on and about the awareness which we are uh, talking about and being a question uh, we have with us two um, uh, registered ngos in which one of them is working on this field only uh, the name is parash uh, parash actually I mean sparsh sparsh means a touch so uh, and by this then by the name you all can understand we need to touch more people about making the awareness about these tamasic products and i believe we all people and youngsters like us will be adding on to it by awareing people about this thing quick question uh, this is all perishable items right and because you are focusing on keeping it organic uh, preservative uh, less um, so how are you ensuring shelf life absolutely sir one second another good question and uh, i want to uh, so firstly and now it's being a good part that i have answered the second question with the first question and now right now i will be answering the third question with the second question we all know uh, when we speak of the tamasic or the ayurvedic thing in, as a whole in india we don't use uh, we have haven't used much of the preservatives and chemicals in our food the thing chutney or the thing achar has a preservative thing included in it from the very beginning because when we increase the salt amount or when we increase the uh, acidic quantities of the products it includes the preservative sections from from the organic we want as well so and i can easily speak of that my products which includes the imli and the amla segment uh, as in the amla segment we are drying up the amlas uh, using solar panels and other things which are included in the uh, mm -hmm. segment so as we all are drying up the amlas we are removing the water segment and water we all know uh, includes all the um, base for the growth of different microorganisms so from that point of thing we are removing all the amla uh, so uh, right now we are typically making a sort of murab bus or the murab bus which are uh, spoken of in hindi um, and apart from this thing in the uh, thought of imli the achars in india they don't ever uh, uh, rot or the uh, they don't have a, a shorter shelf life so my product i have seen the chemical quantities and all the uh, nutritional value of the products doesn't change for 6 months of uh, time i have and i have reported this thing using lab testing being a technical person of horticulture great great i think that's awesome great thank you thank you sir so my question is uh, your marketing strategy is b2b absolutely right you're trying to reach a local market through the distributors 
how would you ensure that you and you reach the right target segment? Because when you speak about the you know health food, uh, the right target target segment is likely to be the people or in the age group of forty plus. Absolutely. You know, as fifteen and twenty years old, people usually don't care about the health. Is, uh, health doesn't feature as the topmost priority when it comes to food, right? So when you do B2B, how do you ensure that you're going to reach the right uh, target segment? First of all, sir, the first thing in which uh, we are planning to move on to B2B second, because uh, right now we don't have the capacity, the financial capacity, and as well as the managerial capacity to include uh, direct B2C um, distribution of our products. And also other thing to be noticed on that, the number of products right now is very less for our company to include some uh, B2C movement. Uh, so as as we move on to more products, then we would be uh, focusing on B2C segment by enabling uh, MLM marketing. So that is multi-level marketing or it's commonly known as network marketing in which one people includes two people underneath and the two people includes four people under it. So it's like a pyramid structure in which uh, people go on to uh, sales as uh, from the uh, customer segment as a whole and apart from this thing the other thing i want to speak upon is uh, the awareness thing in which uh, the uh, younger people generally don't uh, seem to be have much more awareness of this uh, chemical free foods um, i think thanks to covid because uh, people are right now uh, moving on to much more healthier stuff and they are focusing on immunity from a uh, minor level only I actually have a little different sort of just a comment to make on this, uh, on the target market. And of course, it is B2B to begin with and the, looking at the scale and the overall, say, product portfolio. It's, a, it's the right thing to do. But I think from a change agent perspective, the younger generation, at least based on my local experiences and my kid is, my daughter is in that category at this moment. So I can tell that awareness is awesome. Discipline to stick to healthy choices is the question mark. Yes, so, yes. you know, so when the awareness is already there and you introduce products which are healthy and you take care of the, the coverage, you know, publicity and, and just, just that this is available i think it's going to be a sustained effort in that sense so yes sir. may not yeah may not be i will not put the youth to be the one we should ignore but should actually force bring them on the, in the fold who actually can force the habits of adults also to change i guess Absolutely, that's uh, the point i'm making and sir one thing to add on uh, i have made the production such a way not I, I should be speaking of we, because many uh, brothers of me has uh, working on this. Mother, I mean, not my brothers. I have, uh, in Hindi, we call it a Patana brother. So we are not in relation brother. So some elder brothers are with me as well. Uh, so they are making the product in such a way that it have the taste and texture to uh, target younger uh, segment as well. So the people who are not aware of the fact of getting chemical free nutritious food and all these things, they will be attracted by the mere taste and texture of the product. I think that's a very important aspect, especially for the Indian market, that even though they're aware of the health benefits, they kind of decide just based on taste. So what tastes good sells in the Indian market? So yes. it is very nice that you're putting an effort to make it tasty and the texture is also good. So that would attract the younger generation. Absolutely. absolutely. And we, it would add on to the uh, junk segment as a healthier alternative of, uh, to the junk segment. Because we all eat uh, momos, which are typically junk in nature. And uh, apart from the momo, we have the sauce with us, in which the sauce, we can include my Imli sauce. So it becomes the healthier alternative for the sauce in the beginning. Excellent. I think we should wrap up this, uh, this segment. Uh, Aritra, thank you very much. And I think uh, we had a good chat about health, nutrition, and uh, heritage of India in terms of uh, food contributions and food thought contribution. 
let's uh, move on move on to the second segment and i want to thank in advance all the mentors who have joined today who will serve as panelists on this important topic so uh, anil ji ravindra ji yogesh ji and uh, shri uh, so the topic that i picked this time was hindu unity i think really started on the first premise of this question in terms of is there hindu unity and if there is in what context has it been most visible or least visible so i'm going to request uh, anil ji to uh, to start weighing in on uh, this question and then go around <laughs> okay thank you thank you for putting me on the hot seat on this very yes. complex subject uh, you know uh, i saw the post and i feel that this is an extremely complex issue which uh, is going to be difficult to discuss in a, a short um, uh, thing but uh, you know so there was in, in the post that you had there were also historical context you raised about in terms of going back to what used to be say you know, 2000 years ago in india and, and where we are today and comparing all of that so it's it's a very complex subject so if i leave that aside and just focus on my main focus has been um, how can we improve or increase hindu unity uh, and you know all of the other questions that you raise are kind of in the background and and feed into that but uh, uh, i feel as my my perspective that you know, if we just focus on this issue of okay what can we do to improve and build hindu unity both in india as well as globally my approach has been this that the most successful organization in human history at least in the last uh, 2000 years or or from where we are today is the christian church mm. it has been extremely successful for the last 2000 years across the globe from you know one part of the globe to the other from the philippines and the in asia to you know chile and uh, and south america and everywhere in between it has lasted for 2000 years islam took that uh, same model and has uh, copied that and subsequently the um, sikhs are now doing it the uh, jews the jewish community is doing it so everybody is following essentially the same model hmm. and the model is very simply and and the only ones not following it are are hindus buddhists jains and so on and so forth i think to some, uh, some extent maybe some are are doing it more than others but in a sense the the common points of these models which have uh, which are been very successful are are really that what they do is offer services to all their members they say that if you join our group which is the christian group or the muslim group or the jewish group or the sikh group if you are part of our group we will help you in whatever kind of help you need mm. so churches you know every church and is the same thing with and i won't repeat it but it's the same thing in Uh, through mosques or through gurdwaras or whatever is uh, and in in jewish community it's not through the religious but it's more through political organizations such as the ipec and others but they all follow do the same thing they say that look if you need help with food we will give you food those who need help with medical we'll give them help with medical those who need help with education if your kids need uh, tutoring if you need if you are starting a business and you need help with uh, with uh, supporting your business what whatever you know if you need help with visas whatever you need we will try and help you so become a part of our organization we will help you and in return and i think most human beings tend to be grateful if people help you when you are in in need mm. you uh, uh, you turn around and you help the organization and you help others so i think it's very si- simple model which has worked so it's basically is the same thing and of course to do that you need money so you know all of these people have uh, come up and and with money and what i've seen with uh, personal friends who have told me is is also that they don't now at least most of these organizations don't demand money up front they know that the money will come if they help you and you become part of it you will be grateful you will donate you will help yeah and so on and so forth but uh, uh, so my uh, in very simple terms what we uh, hindus do not do and which we can do in order to build more uh, hindu unity is to 
um, to start building these. Okay, and, and the other part of this, uh, the how it works, this broad principle, how it works, whether it's at the church or the mosque or at the uh, synagogue or the Gurdwara level, is it works at local levels. So, you know, every group is local. And these local groups are then connected, interconnected to uh, other groups. So, you know, you let, let's take, uh, I don't know, in, in, under the Christian church, there are multiple uh, uh, kinds of churches, but they all have the same structure. That, you know, if you let's, let's take Methodist church. So they are, where I live in Bethesda, there are several Methodist churches. They're connected to each other, and then they have a hierarchy, goes on to a global hierarchy. And then these people have, between the Methodist church and the Baptist church and, and others, there are some very, they are all independent, but they have a few overarching goals that when it comes to Christianity, we will help each other. Otherwise, we are on our own. Thank okay. you for uh, pretty elaborately uh, painting the view of how we versus others are in terms of unity. Uh, Ravindra ji, uh, uh, it's safe to conclude that we can have much better framework of unity, but where have you seen uh, good examples of Hindu unity? What organizations and where is the hope or, or ray of hope uh, in Hindu unity in the past and in future? Uh, maybe not going very back in past, but in terms of um, contemporary windows. Yeah, so Parnalji, I think uh, the main problem, we need to understand what is at stake in future. When people are aware what is uh, what is at stake, so that's again like based on the fear logic. Like if you know what is happening, and then you the common people get united. But what we need to do a little bit more on awareness side. See, for example, there is not a platform, not a single platform. It can be online. It can be like physical platform where things can be coordinated. Mm. Um, so let's just. Let, let's go step by step. Let's take one practical example. What happened in the Lancaster case in UK? We recently had some like a uh, uh, good like conversation with a very uh, thought leader in different like in uh, AI as well as in like who are active on uh, technologies, active on these uh, the breaking US India causes and all. And one of the pattern was when the community, the Indian community, Hindu community gets in trouble they go for legal, they, their access is legal authority. Yeah. And then when the other community are in the similar situation, they have their own, they will go to their like uh, organization who are localized, who are who has got a send, uh, hierarchical system. Yeah. So the legal things always takes time. You can't get the uh, quick help. They, the legal has its own challenge and its own like a time frame. So we need to like, uh, first of all, people need to participate. Uh, the organization and temple people need to go and participate. If you as gather at one place, you are going to discuss a lot of issues which are common to the community, common to you. So participation is very critical. And then the organization, the different temples and different like organization, they need to come forward and like uh, support. The, we Somehow the people have to force them to participate and get involved in the cause. Mm -hmm. It has to be both way. So the serious lack of brotherhood within our community is very disappointing. Mm -hmm. But then uh, well, when we are so focused on our few, like uh, we need to understand what is it at stake if you don't like come forward. And along with that, participating uh, and then like uh, our meeting, gathering at one place, discussing the common issue. We have to be more proactive in uh, raising the issues and like taking the charge of our problems. So doing you, like I will give you a simple example, doing like yoga and pranayama on your own, you can always go to heaven, but uh, it doesn't help the community. Right. <laughs> so meaning of like individual oh i am like working on myself attaining moksha that's a very selfish attitude we need to we need to there is always a magic uh, there is a different level of joy and um, excitement when you work for a bigger cause mm. and then the cause is always like bigger than yourself right. so we need to address some of those philosophical thing and then we need to start i will say participate in your local community, temples, be vocal, 
discuss issues with the like minded people filter like the lot of fence sitter we need to like uh, catch on them okay. so uh, yeah and then like by default like other things will uh, once you once the common people gather at one place discuss their issue by default like solution will come as you go one by one uh, the other thing i feel like if if we sort of make example of some sects within hinduism that have been more successful that that could also be emulated because anil ji mentioned of course the catholic church has been successful for 2000 years similarly there are these rays of hope of sects in within hindus that have been very successful both in creating uh, a community as well as um beautiful temples across the world and we know examples of that and those physical structures then help creating community programs and such so definitely uh, there are examples that we could build on and uh, and advance in emulating and growing no, no absolutely i think that is a very important point take a babs community exactly that was <laughs> that was the example <laughs> in my mind <laughs> yeah and uh... Uh, so that's i think that's exactly so that's reason the participation doesn't matter local temple babs uh, and then like iskon doesn't matter you uh, we need to make a habit of like participating in our like organization in our like temples our rituals that by default uh, generate like set of actions so absolutely yeah yogesh ji uh understanding a, a challenge obviously helps if you understand the causes so where we stand today and of course history of hinduism and experiences is uh, of hindu people in millions and uh, many millions uh, goes many uh, uh, thousands of years so what we are seeing now is a culmination of all of those experiences put together and uh, impacts of it from from your point of view what is the causes for lack of hindu unity and it's a complex topic completely acknowledged and noted <laughs> but but some some that come to your mind as the obvious relevant uh causes for lack of hindu unity in today's world i think at a philosophical level finding a unity structure united structure for hindu quote and quote is actually in my feeling is already a wrong notion because the hindu is not same as uh christianity or islam or even even if we look at indic religions of sikhism or buddhism or jainism it's like it's like science in the sense who is the uh, originator of physics can we say this from maths no but every generation over thousands of years hundreds of years added to the value of that knowledge it's we are like that mm -hmm. so hence the point are we looking at that in a way trying to mimic what it means from what it is for others unfortunately that is never going to be settled that debate because the thing is identity ultimately you know anil ji said that and ravindra ji also said similar things but there is a sense of identity that there is a sense of purpose both of them are many fold i do not have one single identity uh um, and so is my purpose is something very unique or local to me similarly if we extend that from an individual to a family to a smaller social construct and to a you know larger set you know that the definition of identity will start diverging significantly and so will be the sense of purpose and uh, to be very honest actually historically that has helped us to survive unlike all other civilizations who, who had a single head and the head was chopped off and they just finished 
we survived because there was not a single head to be chopped off you know even after the onslaughts of starting from at least from alexander's time to wherever so while it it also held us back from achieving our full potential especially when the situations became adverse when the adversaries were there it simply stopped us from becoming a better or a victorious over that because again we could not combine together to even fight the adversity as well so my sense is this is always going to this has always been a conflict it will always be a conflict i'm not saying a violent conflict but in all dimensions of conflict uh and there is really no one end state which will be achieved now the thing is what we can help is and that is where we have been harmed as a civilization particularly you know we have started losing not only the spiritual or a philosophical space in the battle but also started losing our geographical space and that that onslaught continues to hit us i mean it was of course you know even if we do not limit it to 47 which is very obvious which is it was you know previous 500 years 1000 years it has always been from an cultural influence perspective losing you know part in southeast asia or you know myanmar and whatever they they simply were out of our cultural influence in you know history and now it is invading becoming all, all more pervasive after 75 years of independence in into the mainland so the battle has to be defined the single the purpose has to be defined what is it which we are trying to protect right uh, we can't wish away others to be not part of the society that's just not it mm-hmm. uh, that's the wrong perspective but the super, so so when i say identity and purpose the example i go to temple here mm-hmm. i try to be active but the problem is there is a tamil group there is a bengali group there is a gujarati group there is all regional types of affiliations as if i'm back in india but in india actually it was not that obvious in us it's actually mm-hmm. far more obvious because they have defined their identity as a bengali samaj mm-hmm. right or a telugu samaj in that sense or a hindi samaj and anybody else who does not def- fall into that very narrow definition is an outsider mm-hmm. right so what can you do you can't do anything and that circles back to the other point originally which anil ji was started saying what is so unique and uh, making christianity powerful or islam powerful because at least there was somebody who could define what your really big identity is at the top level what your singular purpose is at that level so if you have differences in between at a lower level at that level i have no compromise we can't have that and we do not have it even if it rss or whatever and even if some attempts are made so like in temples you listen to pandit ji speaking he is talking at an arms length as if uh, apologetic about preaching the audience sitting there right and if audience picks it good but i don't care after that my job is just to tell a story do a puja do a ritual and be done with it hmm. i'm aloof same thing goes you go into and that the other part that none of them succeeded none without having political authority is christianity control europe europe for mm-hmm. far too yep. long actually destroyed europe mm-hmm. post roman time for 1000 years probably same goes with islam they they controlled the power and the authority If all the young people i see in this forum are the crucial people to be at our time no one talked about these things if Absolutely. you remember the so so that that's uh, the purpose of this organization and and this program in fact the <laughs> program so um 
absolutely very well noted hinduism is by definition very pluralistic uh, and and uh, therefore we define our identities as hindus uh, in individually and by different ways by which we define it nevertheless uh, all the comments we heard there is need for some flavor version of hindu unity uh, and again, as Ravindra ji left the session and, and he left saying we need to do action oriented things, which is mm -hmm. uh, absolutely the, the purpose of uh, Saraswati Sangam project as well, be mission and action oriented at individual levels, what we can do uh, in by the backdrop of Hinduism being very pl uh, pluralistic. So Shrikant, um, what's your thoughts on what we can do as individuals of course uh, engaged with the saraswati sangam in enhancing unity right uh, obviously arising from the fact that each of us has our individual view of what hinduism means to us but there is some point in uh, a collective sense for our collective uh, sustainability viability and resilience in, as a community both in india and world over so some thoughts and i would that's that's, 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 a, that's very, a very challenging question because it has many dimensions in which it can be answered. So at the outset, I do agree with uh, Yogesh that it's going to be difficult to uh, achieve Hindu unity. I think the at the core of this is the is how each of us defines Hinduism. For some, Hinduism is a way is, is a way of life. For some, it is a religion. So that sense of belonging to Hinduism is not ingrained in many of us from a very young age. So that is a factor that plays in a, a plays hugely into the lack of unity that is present amongst Hindus today. Uh, there are other causes too, but in terms of what we can do as individuals is at an individual level, I think each family needs to start with their own unit and start and, and I would say codify the practice of uh, observing or practicing Hindu customs and traditions as a requirement in each family. For example, we are not required to go to temples. You know, many people go to temples maybe once or twice a year. We are not, as Brahmins, and I'm speaking specifically of Brahmins, we are required to do a number of things, you know, every day, you know, we're required to uh, recite Gayatri Mantra in the morning and the evening. So these are little, little things, you know, and, and nobody really cares about these things today at a family level. I think if, if there are families that are bothered about Hindu unity, I think they need to start, as I say, the charity brings at home. Start with the unit and start uh, observing these practices, observing this, uh, even if you want to call them rituals, uh, more uh, regularly and more stridently. The other aspect that uh, many people did not touch about is the reason why we have this caste things going on in the US. Or why have these, uh, so many of the things, many people are Hindus, why are they speaking against Hinduism? Is, and this needs to be done at a community level and who at the community level it can take ownership for that is up for discussion or, you know, it's, I, don't, I don't have an answer to that. Maybe RSS, but I think an awareness, a mass awareness campaign needs to be conducted which spreads the message that all the sects, all including everybody, including Dalits, at the end of the day are Hindus. I think that is very important. I think that message needs to go through. Why did BJP, for example, lose uh, in Karnataka, right? Lingayats, who are Lingayats? Lingayats are not a religion. Who are local Lingas? They are not religion, they are Hindus. Why did they vote for an anti-Hindu party like a Congress? Before we encounter anything to do with caste, we should rebut because that doesn't define and should not in the future define anything about our religion. 
because it was never meant to define uh, segments in our in our community and society. Yogesh ji, uh, uh, your inputs on what individually you would recommend the mentees to do uh, in enhancing Hindu unity. So as I said, uh, you know, in my introductory note, which I sent a uh, couple of days, weeks back, and as has been my experience uh, interacting with, with some like-minded people here. So people look for, wait for some opportunities to do something about it. So my message at that time was also to them, is, was and is to anybody we, I talk to, there is always a, an opportunity at an individual level. There's always, hmm. with the current uh, communication options, uh, you are not limited to physically do anything. You can speak, you can exchange notes, you can try to get into a debate as well. So those micro opportunities are everywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things which I say, we should not try to shy away from uncomfortable debates and conversations. Right. right. And a lot of us will do it, right? Yeah. Oh, it's tough. Well, no, better not to talk because peace is important. Yes, peace is important. Mm -hmm. Or maintaining relationship is also important. But at times, you may actually want to say, well, sorry, let me try to educate you. Mm. I think adopting that tone is, is a rather useful thing. The other thing when while doing that, so one is within our group. So like I can say in families we talk, ensure that our younger generation is aware of the things. Okay. When we are doing the rituals, most of our rituals are actually scientific in nature. The, okay. the Western perspective, now looking outside in, in Indian style, our things, is because they are probably, for generations, they have been exposed to what is called pagan mm -hmm. style. Yep. Yep. And they think Hinduism is a pagan. Actually, no. So you do the Havan, every now and then, why do we do the havan? What does the cleaning of the air do inside the house or outside, just outside? How do you repel the mosquitoes, right? Why do, if you observe, why do our temples, most of them are either at a water body, corner of a water body uh -huh. or next to a forest? Because that's when temple dis declares this is our property, don't spoil. So don't spoil the water. It's a fresh water, drinking water. That way, when think of it, thousands of years back, you were trying to do the environmental thing, right? Yeah, we wanted to protect the environment. How will you teach millions of people spread across a land of size of India, old India, right? So you institutionalize things. So have that converse, try to figure out why would I uh, try to find a rational explanation. Then generally you will find. Why do we have so much forest fire in Europe, uh, in US or in Australia and or now in Europe as well? I mean, in India also it has started in last decade or so, some forest fires in the mountains. But in India, we really struggled to have the forest fire. We did not have the forest fires yeah. much of it. Why? Because... When can I go? Can everybody understand Hindi? Mm -hmm. Yes, of because course. I think because that I can explain better in Hindi. Jab purane guru kolwali parampara me unko bola jata tha chhatro ko ki jaake lakdi bean kar leke aao havan ke liye. Wo jaate the jungle me jo bhi lakdiyan tooti hui padi hoti thi sook jati thi. Wo unko bean ke laate the. Mm. You created a structure, not in a written in a book, but you created a structure to keep cleaning the dry woods out of the forest. Mm. And uh, So they US you know, if you are living in US, such grand big parks, right? 
how many animals are there so that <laughs> yeah you make you have con you have converted it into a tinder box right. because in california if it has not rained for 3 years oh that's a match box literally mm -hmm. right so well, my point being or most of our rituals you will find have a scientific reason of course over generations there's some bad habits crept in you know uh, so so yeah figure it out have a conversation about that with the younger people in the family or even in the next you know immediate community level so uh, that's that the last point i will make in the one 30 seconds thing in india we do not feel it that way too much but outside india we should actually be looking more outward looking to engage with out non indians or non hindu people then just having this conversation internally and if you remember me talking about this for a very long time it any of us renting it out in our close groups has no meaning because there is no outcome out of it because my neighbor or my policy maker or my lawmaker in the city in the council in the state or national level they are not hearing us so there's no outcome to make our discourse engagement outcome oriented right so the caste is a, such a prime example i mean that i'm happy actually somebody is fighting that battle even if there's a small individual group but yes or swastika battle we talked about it we know the story about it i engaged with my jew colleague at length recently telling him about this swastika battle and telling him jews need to really improve on their world view mm -hmm. so uh, i know ankita needs to leave soon uh, anil ji anything you'd like to add in terms of what at individual level we should look to do yeah i think uh, what i said that there are millions of things that everybody can do i mean that can be done so instead of worrying about you know is this the best or that the best everybody should just do what they feel like doing and you know when people say that oh why are you doing this why are you not doing that that's a waste of time just do what you want to do because everything is useful and uh, the second thing is that we talked about differences caste etc you know caste is a fact of life it's not going to change anytime soon yes it will change but it will take you know uh, generations to change and uh, as you know that uh, in 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 your garden if you have weeds anybody will tell you that there is no way to zero out weeds mm. okay the the way you deal with with it is that you put more fertilizer so that the grass grows faster and it mm. covers up the weeds because it's impossible to uh, get rid of the weeds completely but you can gr make the grass grow faster so everything looks better so i think that's the approach that we have to take yes we uh, i mean first of all of course we should stop talking about castes but until that happens or uh, we can reduce it personally until that happens the way to do it is to find what is common between all the castes uh -huh. and focus on that and yeah. and that is what my initial point was that the you know the need for food or medicine or driver or you know uh, visa help or whatever these are common issues across castes if we start focusing on these issues the caste issue will hopefully go away but people even if it doesn't go away people will say that look this guy irrespective of his caste you know, he helped me with this let me help him so i think let's focus on the commonalities there are many commonalities uh, that we human beings have let's focus on that and that will help us overcome the caste thank you very well said wonderful thank, thank you, you so much thank you uh, yogesh ji anil ji shrikant ji uh, let let me open up for any comments the mentees want to offer ankita i know you uh, want to jump off the meeting but uh very quickly any thoughts um yeah go ahead and the one comment uh, i want to speak of is a sentence in hindi so that goes on like this uh chhati se uchi kad nahi kad se uchi chhati nahi hoti aur dharm se uchi jati nahi hoti nice nice <laughs> good one <laughs> very nice uh yes i would like to add something uh first of all this has been a very uh, insightful session like from all the mentors 
But there is something that I do believe is a impediment to the unity that Hindus have had, which is kind of an apologetic and defeatist attitude. Of course, like not being able to defend your own religion. And this comes from the lack of understanding of the rituals and the stuff that we've had. Like, for example, if someone ask, uh, asks a Hindu a question that why do you have so many gods, they wouldn't be able to defend it and they wouldn't be able to put things into perspective for them. I think that is one of the most, uh, you know, very crucial aspect that is very wrong here. And the second thing is uh, the just underplaying of the atrocities committed on people of India and Hindus more specifically. Uh, especially in history books, since I just passed out of high school, I am quite aware of like, we we study about the Mughal Empire, we study about uh, all the atrocities that took place. But all of this happens in that one small para in the end of the chapter, which is also cancelled out by the ICSC board, and nobody bothers reading it anyway. So we only learn about the architecture and where they had their capital as and what they did, which I think is a very uh, wrong thing that is going on. And I think one more thing, which is a co popular sentiment in India, is that just because the Hindus are the minority, they think that we must concede more to the others, which is a very wrong way of looking at it. We shouldn't be expected to uh, kind of make more concessions and make more, uh, take more hits just to, uh, you know, please or another minority. I think these are the thoughts that I would like to put out. Excellent points, Abhuday. Excellent points. Uh, uh, reinforcing and sharing with others so that we can make up, compensate, improve ourselves, not individually, but also others that you interface with. Extremely, extremely important. And then movies like the Kerala story have been highlighting and then people are creating very crafted responses to these questions about the uh, the number of gods and what the, the, does that mean and all the other aspects. So very important to stay engaged and make the impact that we can at individual levels and community levels. So I think we'll wrap up with that unless there was any other thoughts uh, coming from the scholars.